What's good, people? This is about that time to randomly relate reverse rants, you know, hate. So let me just say this to start this video. Salute Devin Haney, new undisputed champion at 135. Salute to George Cambosis. Now, I may make a separate video. I don't know. It just depends how I feel after I get everything out. Okay, first off... Let me just, with the fight itself, Devin Haney, in my opinion, won every single round. Every single round. He controlled the distance. He adjusted by the third round to where you could see him landing that jab constantly anyway. He was landing a jab from the first round, working off of the jab, his movement, his timing. That's how you cut off speed in combinations with timing, okay? And... He did everything he was supposed to do. Of course, when George Campbell just throw anything, whether it was one punch, whether it was two or three punches, the crowd is screaming even when he's not landing shots. George Cambosis, whenever he did land anything, he wasn't able to catch him with more than one shot. And basically, my reason for picking Devin Haney to win was not just because I wanted him to win. I felt like he's a better fighter than George Cambosis. He has more in his arsenal than George Cambosis. See, people get obsessed with flash and flare to the point where they don't understand the technical side of things. Where, when you can't land those punches, and again, how when you can't land those punches, you're basically in a place of, you start trying to play chess. Now you're playing into the hand of the chess master. Okay? You're, you're, you're not as good at chess. So, your best bet is to get in and put that pressure on so now that leads me to this point for all of you that constantly want to play the double standard word game when it comes to people saying that Devin Haney you know nobody walks through him what you guys fail to realize is really simple the reason why that comment that statement comes up is for the simple fact you guys keep saying you count Devin Haney out saying, oh, he can't punch, he can't punch. So, yeah, well, okay, if he can't punch, nobody's ever ran through him. So, why why is it that nobody's doing him the way, you know, Sean Porter did Paulie Malignaggi? Okay, why is nobody running through him? So, when you say, yeah, but he's never ran through anybody, what you're trying to say is, yeah, he's gonna he's never ran through anybody, but he's going to have to be able to do that with George Cambosis. And since he's never done that, how we expect him to do that in this fight, right? Yeah, he's going to have to be... No, this is what you guys are saying. But I said, okay, cool. We all entitled to our opinions, but it's irrelevant for the double standard shit because what you guys over... over What you underestimate and overlook about Devin Haney is, for one, that guy is a young master boxer right now. So if he does actually get better and improve, then it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be a problem. Put it like that. Win, lose, or draw in any fight, he's going to be a problem if he continues to get better. Let me just say it that way. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, he got the job done. You all called this guy the email champion. Oh, he's no real champion. Look how he got the belt. Okay. But you overlook his skills. For whatever reason, you guys have something against master class boxers and you, you cheer for all this flash and flare and just guys that go for knockouts all the time. But, you know... When you, when your lack of common sense, okay, when, 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 when ignorance, okay, and when I'm, I, and I'm not saying that in a way to clown you guys, but when your ignorance impedes your ability to use common sense, this is when you need to just be quiet, step back, and then think about what you're saying before you say it. We're not talking about an opinion on who you think is better. Basically because you're being fair about your assessment. It's more of I'm a fanboy of. Or I want to see this guy win. I want to see that guy win. I want to see him lose. Listen. Okay, let's just be real. Before George Cambosis, Fort Tiafimo Lopez. Who was talking about George Cambosis? I can't remember his name ever coming up in in conversations. Ever. After he beat Tiafimo. After he beat Tiafimo. Oh, he got lucky. He's just holding on to the belts. You want to know what's funny? When Lomachenko lost to, T to Tiafimo, he said he think he won the fight, which was crap. And all of a sudden, now you want to take the pictures with the shoulder all bandaged up. Okay. 
Tia Fimo Lopez, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, they don't want to give me credit, right? Then all of a sudden, Cambosis beats him. Then he does the same exact thing that Tio does. It sounds just like Tio with the excuses. Then he says he won every round. He won at least 10 out of the 12 rounds. His father says he won every single round. George Cambosis is sounding just like Tia Fimo. Just like Lomachenko, isn't he? Oh, I think I won the fight. Uh, I think every time I hit uh, Devin Haney, I was hurting him. What fight were you watching, brother? You was hurting him every time you hit him. And then he said he barely even got touched. Why is your face all bruised up, man? Oh, you know, he used the jab. He worked off the jab. And, you know, but, and the, the judges saw it his way. You know, they, 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 according to the judges, he won. What you mean? Like, so basically, you got robbed. You didn't really lose the fight. And then when you say no excuses, 10 times out of 10, when fighters say no excuses, the next thing come out their mouth is going to contradict the whole no excuses comment. You lost the fight. You got beat. And even judges was trying to, with that one judge, 116 to 112, oh, hell no, bro. That fight, hell no. Everybody pretty much is like, nah, man, I, I can't see one round that I think George actually won. Now, Paulie Malignaggi, at least he manned up, put a video out saying I was wrong. Yeah, he was wrong. This is what I was telling you guys in the last video. These guys are believing the hype. It's funny because Everybody said, oh, George Cambosis is just holding the belts until Lomachenko come take him back because we knew at that point Tiafimo didn't want a rematch. So basically, everybody underestimated Devin Haney. Oh, he looked bad. His, he had a fight with this guy and this guy. He didn't look too good. Didn't y'all say the same exact shit about Tank? Oh, man, this guy beat Tank. That guy beat Tank because Tank struggled against Cambosis. Oh, Devin Haney couldn't even knock out Cambo, right? Then look at what Tank has went on to do. Now look at what Devin Haney has went on to do. And one thing you guys forget about crafty, crafty veteran fighters, they may not be in their primes anymore. They may not be, you know, exactly what they were, but they have enough in here to still stay in a fight, even if they're losing the fight. True. There's been times throughout history where world-class fighters have struggled with, uh, C class fighter, right? Had just had, just had one of them nights against a C, a, you know, B minus class fighter, and then all of a sudden, some other C class fighter or B minus class fighter comes and destroys that guy. But <laughs> you guys make your mind up based on that. Let's revisit history, okay? Let's take guys like Kenny Norton, okay? Joe Frazier. Who beat Ali? Ali beat them, but they beat him. Okay, so he never had an easy win against either one of those guys. What happens? The second fight with Norton and Ali, Ali kind of blew past him. The second fight against Frazier, Ali did way better to where he pretty much, you know, he won the fight. It was no, oh, I can't tell who won. He won the fight against both of them in the second fight. We know what happened in third fights between, the, you know, the two. The three of them. But at the end of the day, right? Ali, I'm not going to say he struggled because the guys were good enough to bother his style. So he had classic brawls with these guys. Okay. George Foreman comes along and destroyed both of them. Knockout early. So why would anybody believe that Muhammad Ali, who was only 32, Let's 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 point out he was only 32 when he fought George Foreman. But why would anybody believe he was going to beat Foreman after seeing what they did, what he did to to to, to Norton and Frazier? See how history repeats itself. You see how history repeats itself. Oh, Ray Leonard fought the wrong fight against Thomas Hearns in the first fight. He should have been on the inside. Yeah, it's easier said than done. True, shorter reach, shorter in height. You need to get on the inside. He had to be careful coming in with Thomas Hearns. See, Hearns knew how to nullify Leonard getting in to close that distance. That's what you guys got to understand. When we watch Tank Davis against Raleigh Romero, it's not, oh, Raleigh's such, such, such a great boxer. He was getting, no. Tank was setting his shots up. He was planning for that knockout. He wasn't going to be risking and standing and just bang with the guy. The guy is much bigger than Tank naturally, which is where his confidence came from, like I told you guys. When Tank knocked him out, Raleigh calls it a lucky shot. Raleigh makes excuses. 
And the funny thing about Raleigh is the last time we saw him before Tank, he had a fight with a guy that he really lost against, right? We seen him going in and, 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 and what did he do? So without even avenging that that, that fight, that, that, that they gave him the win. But to go clear all doubt and give that man his rematch like he said, no. Without even doing that, you guys already started, oh, I think he's going to beat Tank. Even though Tank is an accomplished fighter. Raleigh did better in that fight than most people thought he would. I'll give him that. I'm not here to tear a fighter down just because I feel like it. No, I'm just honest about what I see. And what happened when he got in there was what? He got knocked out after he talked all that stuff. Somehow, he talked y'all into believing he could beat Tank Davis. I'm going to knock him out in the first round. That's that. He's a bitch. He's a pussy. Blah, 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 blah. And y'all believed it. You guys were sleeping on Cambosis. But then all of a sudden now, I oh, don't know, man. I think Cambosis is going to beat Tom Haney because Cambosis, he throw combinations. He's this. He, oh, okay. So basically, you guys are just like Tiafimo. Tiafimo Lopez, remember this, okay? Remember. And I like to rub it in because <coughs> I want you guys to remember what comes out of your mouths. Remember what Tio said. To be honest with you, George Cambosis has a better resume than Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, and Devin Haney. All of them guys. He's a, he's a more dangerous opponent than those three. Remember he said that. Do you remember? That came out of Tio's mouth. And then all of a sudden, Tio gets his ass kicked, and then he makes excuses about, oh, man, I got robbed, and, 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 and I won 10 of those, at least 10 of those 12 rounds. His dad goes crazy with the whole, he won every single round, right? When we know that that wasn't the case at all. That fight was not even close. But he did drop Cambosis, but Cambosis dropped him. Haney haven't even been dropped in the fight. And instead of saying, yo, he showed a strong chin, though, he got rocked, but he stayed up. Oh, man, he got hit by this guy. He got, okay, Ryan Garcia got chinned by, by, by Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell. Yeah, he got up in one, just like Devin Haney stayed up and continued to win. And I don't knock Ryan Garcia for getting dropped. It's a fight. My thing is, even when Ryan Garcia run his mouth, or everybody, according to him and Raleigh Romero, everybody else is a shit fighter. But they won't fight the motherfuckers that they call them shit fighters. So I can't respect that. Now, George Cambosis is running around here. Wait, before I even get off of that. Before I even get off of that. Tiafimo Lopez. You know he's a hypocrite. Because let me show you what he said. After saying George Cambosis was better than all of those guys. What was he saying when he was asked about Haney versus Cambosis? It was a setup from the beginning. It was a setup. They just set it up for Haney to win. Because they know Haney's going to beat him. Oh, so now all of a sudden. Cambosis is no longer better than Devin Haney. See, his father shook hands with Bob Arum. Gave his word that they were going to fight Lomachenko. Right? <coughs> Devin Haney kept running up on, on people. And he kept running up on Tio. When are we going to fight? Sign the contract. Let's go. We want to, you know, let's, we want to fight. Uh, Aries, I think that's Cap. This guy trying to make his, he's trying to build his profile. Oh, man, he's just trying to make it look like blah, blah. I'm like, where do y'all come up with these concepts? Where? The one guy getting in everybody's face is only doing it for clout. But he's getting up in these guys' faces on camera where there's no need for he said, she said. Because you see the interaction between the two. And you hear what's going on, right? So all of a sudden, Tiafimo Lopez admits, oh, you, you know why the zone they did to me. Because they, they knew what I was getting ready to do. Right. They knew what you was doing. You was lying to everybody, pretending you was going to fight Lomachenko, knowing you was going to 140, pretending you was going to fight Devin Haney, knowing you was going to 140, pretending you was going to fight Ryan Garcia, knowing you was going to 140. So you never intended on fighting those guys at all. Then when he goes to 140, all these guys weight draining themselves, man, they want that smoke, come to 140. Nobody coming to 140 because you there. They feel like they can't make 135? Okay, cool. Then, then guess what? Guess what? Then they'll go to 140. But at the end of the day, that was your excuse. I should have went to 140 a long time ago. So the whole time you knew that you wasn't going to keep these obligations that you verbally agreed to and claimed that you wanted. You got beat, and that's the end of that. Now, when you break down, I don't even have to go through a breakdown of the fight. We've seen what happened. He got dominated. 
And for Paulie and anybody that disrespecting Devin Haney by saying he has a, 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 a secondary belt, nobody cares about that belt, that was bullshit. You, just like ESPN and other outlets, tried to claim and deem this guy, George Cambosis, as undisputed. No, he was unified. And if his belt didn't mean anything, you know what George Cambosis would have said? I don't want that secondary belt. We ain't even fighting for your belt. Your belt don't matter. It's about my belt. No, that's bullshit. Why? Because he needed that belt to become undisputed. So now your email paper champion, your email oh struggling to beat Cambosis, I mean um uh, um uh Gamboa and all these other guys, yeah, guess what? He won and he dominated and he went over to Australia to do it. So all the excuses that people was making, I keep telling you guys, it's skills, man. It's certain fighters that have it. And there's certain fighters that you're not sure about, but you know, you kinda eh. I never felt like I think George is gonna beat Hanky. And there's times with certain fighters I'm not sure about. But I felt like, nah, just like I said, I was I was vocal about Valdez getting beat by Shakur. Completely outclassed. Did it happen? Yes. I said it in this fight. After, plain and simple, I, I often say, should the guy win if the guy wins. But like I said, after he beats Cambosha's ass, what's the excuse going to be now? Right? What's the excuse going to be? So now that Cambosis has claimed, and, and, and then Cambosis is saying that the referees cheated. Oh, they should have did this. They should have did that. Oh, he was holding and ducking his head down. And all, so basically what happened was um, Devin Haney didn't win because he was landing shots and outlanding him and, and beat him in a fight. Devin Haney got the decision because he was holding and ducking his head down. That's, that's why he won the fight. Look, excuses will not change the outcome of that fight. Now, as far as Devin Haney saying, okay, like you said, everything got to make sense, right? You put me through all this shit, so you want a rematch? Yeah, I'm not going to welcome you with open arms. I'm going to treat you the same way you treated me. I, I can understand that shit, let me be honest with you. But overall, as far as you're the champ now, I don't want to see Devin Haney. I don't want to see anybody win the championship and then become like the person that they went through hell with to get to that point. So, you know, you got, and he was, and listen, all that bullshit about, oh, I could have fought anybody. A true champion wouldn't say that shit because why, why would you want, even want to fight? Why would you insult yourself and say, oh, I could just fight anybody. I don't want a top guy. Let me let me let me just make some money first. Let me fight an easy fight. Why would you think like that? Even say I could have fought. They always I didn't have to take this fight. Then what the fuck kind of champion are you if you didn't have to take that fight? You don't want it. Why would you? Do you not want to test yourself against the other guys, the other top fighters in your in your division? So to even say that I didn't have to take this fight. Oh, he dared to be great. No, he was forced into the goddamn fight. Stop lying to on yourselves and lying to yourselves. And then on top of that, you see all that talk he was doing about he's a rat. This guy's a rat. He he didn't back up his own countrymen. I would never go against my countrymen. Well, we got tapes all over the place about you working with working with Manny Pacquiao to go against your countryman, Jeff Horn. Oh, but the excuse was, well, Pacquiao's his idol. You, you lied. You'd never go against your countrymen. And my thing was, why? What does that have to do with anything? All of this nonsense. It's called the championship of the world. Not the not not the Commonwealth Championship. Not the champion of Mexico. Not the champion of fucking Texas. <laughs> you know, it's the world championship. So all of this, every country, America included, you can wave your flag for your fighter. You can sit there and sing along the whole fight. It's not going to save their ass once they get in that ring. It is what it is. Somebody got to win. Somebody got to lose. Did you hear him at the end? When they went back talking um, backstage and, and, and Bill Haney, where'd you get the rat thing from me? Oh, I just made that up. That's what Devin was talking about. This shit is all fake. What did I tell you guys? Every time you've seen Devin Haney and you've seen George Cambosis face-to-face, it's been a mutual respect. Then all of a sudden, because it's like now he he has to take the fight. And, and Devin, he gave him these bullshit stipulations, hoping Devin would say, man, I'm not going for this sucker shit. Hell no. Fuck that, man. And what happened? I want to. I want to end this guy's career. I want to damage his career. I, I want to. I, I, this this guy. He's not on my level. I want. I want to damage this guy. You want to damage this guy? You want to end his career because he wants a shot? Okay. 
He didn't even have that kind of fucking, he didn't even say things like that about Tiafino. It was just anger, anger, anger. And you never seen any of that between him and Dedham. In fact, there's a Fight Hub interview. It's actually a photo shoot, not even an interview, it's a photo shoot with Devin and um, George Cambosis. And you see, you hear, I had it Chromecasting through my TV and I'm like, wait a minute, did he say what I think he just said? I slid it back and rewind and listened. Yeah, how am I doing? You think, how am I, how am I, am I selling the fight? Am I doing a good job? And you hear Devin say, oh yeah, yeah, you're doing a good job selling the fight, yeah. So all this, I'm a rat, he's a rat and all this WWE stuff, this... That's what Devin was talking about. And I was alluding to the whole, why is he all of a sudden acting like he has such a hatred for Devin? Like, where, like, this is bullshit. Like, you know? Well, it doesn't matter, does it now? Because again, your email champion is now undisputed, officially. Ring Magazine, all that lineal. Yeah, you have all of that right now in Devin Haney. It wasn't Cambosis and it wasn't Tiafimo. So now, hopefully, Devin Haney remains the same guy business always changes is always going to be some kind of change some way one way or another when a person gets a certain status but hopefully he doesn't repeat that and hopefully <coughs> we can get him versus tank davis we know garcia walked the fuck away when he was his mandatory so maybe him having everything on the line maybe that will get garcia to finally get in the ring with him tank davis shakur steven that's the fights we want to see I can't speak for these guys and know what they're going to do. We just have to wait and see. And that's just how that goes. But salute both fighters. But see, all that unnecessary bullshit, that's what I'm talking about with boxing. Because when you lose, and that's what my, my thing about arrogant people. An arrogant person will never just say, hey, the better man won. My hat's off to him. It's always, no excuses, but, well, the referee, you know, it's a lot of things that could have been going on, you know, uh, uh, yeah, he was holding and ducking his head excessively, uh, yeah, you know, uh, 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 the referee, you know, uh, did, didn't do his job, you know, uh, uh, the guy was doing a whole lot of things, man, he didn't even get warned, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I feel like I was landing the most punches, and I was hurting him every, t yeah, okay, that's arrogant people, that's delusional people, which is why I never really get along with arrogant people, you know, I don't, I don't like arrogant people. Humble, confident in yourself, supremely confident, yeah. Arrogant, nah, I can't deal with that. When you talk all that smack and you can't back it up, it's on you. Devin did what he had to do. So now all that talking about how he struggled with Gamboa and this and that, what does it mean now? I keep telling you guys, Evander Holyfield struggled with Burt Cooper, if that's the case. And people was like, this bum-ass, fake-ass smoking Joe. Oh, and he dropped Holyfield. Remember that? In Atlanta, in his hometown, dropped Holyfield. So because of that, oh, hell no. Nah. He ain't fucking with Tyson. Oh, no. Nah. And I remember when Holyfield fought Bobby Chaz. What did everybody say? I remember the commentator. Oh, I'm pretty sure somewhere Mike Tyson's sitting around watching this going, oh, yeah, I'll fight Holyfield. Make that fight right now. Mm-hmm. What happened when they fought? Somebody got their ass whooped twice and it wasn't Holyfield. So you can't sit here and always, you can't go by, he beat him, so he'll beat him. It's not a given, bro. That's what I tell you guys. You got to you gotta educate yourselves with common sense. <laughs> common sense. We can all be wrong about a prediction, all of us. But what I'm saying is you guys love to compare because this guy didn't look this way against that guy. You guys think because Adrian Broner copied Floyd's style and Madonna manhandled him that he was going to beat Floyd. And I told you guys. Adrian Broner is no Floyd. Bottom line, it comes down to what happens in the ring. Skills pay the motherfucking bills. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people, and I will catch y'all on the next video.